evening. Welcome to our first ever virtual course selection night. We're very happy that you could join us. We understand under these circumstances it's a little difficult, so we really do appreciate you being here with us tonight. My name is Brenda Posnanski and I'm the Director of School Counseling and Admissions and I'm very happy to welcome you. But first, let us start with a prayer from our president, Mrs. Linda Broder. Mrs. Broder. Good evening. Let us remember that we are in the presence of God and we will begin as we do all things in prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, these are indeed uncertain times. We know that you are with us and we ask you to wrap your loving arms around the class of 2024 as they begin their journey at Bishop Burton High School. We ask you to bless our students, inspire them to discover their talents, to grow as individuals, and to contribute to our school community. Offer them the inner strength to believe in themselves, as well as the will to act with kindness and compassion in all that they do. Fill them with a passion of lifelong learning and the confidence and resiliency to overcome the challenges that they are indeed destined to meet. Watch over us, the teachers and professional staff at BG, as we may guide and mentor these new cardinals in our care. May our classrooms and offices be sanctuaries. May our own love for learning be inspiring and our interactions be example of God's infinite and unending love for us. Finally, we pray for the families of these new students. Guide them as we create a sacred partnership where together we strive to form intelligent, inquisitive, tolerant, just, and involves men and women of faith who accept the task of building your kingdom and of transforming for the better the world in which we live. We ask this as we do all things in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Broder. Tonight we have a very full agenda and I will go over that agenda with you in just one minute, but we would like to also welcome Mr. Dan Gorell, our Vice Principal for Academics, who will share with you the academic process. Mr. Gorell. Good evening, and thank you for attending our course selection presentation. My name is Daniel Gorell, and I have the honor of serving as Vice Principal at Bishop Gurdon. In my role, I primarily oversee the academic program of the school and the teachers who will work so hard to help our students become the best versions of themselves. Students and parents, you have made the commitment to success, not just here at BG, but beyond its walls as you realize the benefits of lifelong learning and the responsibility to use your gifts and talents to respond effectively to the world around you and for the benefit of all. BG teachers have carefully crafted and continually improve upon a curriculum which is challenging, fulfilling, and focused on preparing students for the rigors of college and the working world. To the student's benefit, the end result of this effort is a transcript which demonstrates a depth of knowledge, understanding, focused dedication, and goal setting. The BG curriculum has been designed with the academic and developmental needs of students in mind. We expect our students to participate in and outside the classroom we expect them to learn to advocate for themselves and become confident and capable learners. It is why we have crafted a curriculum which offers both academic challenge and the opportunity for students to pursue extracurricular activities. Regardless of the academic level in which your student finds himself or herself, his or her transcript will reflect a breadth and depth of learning which colleges desire. Our prescribed ninth and 10th grade curriculum intentionally seeks to meet the needs of students based upon their academic, social, emotional, and developmental needs. Not every student is ready for a schedule filled with honors courses, but we recognize that the day may come when every student might be. It's one of the reasons why we do not offer AP courses to underclassmen. Students must first learn what it means to value the pursuit of knowledge and to develop a respect for learning, and not merely to build a transcript and amass an impressive GPA. Those two results will manifest themselves as a result of authentic learning experiences, not simply because the student registered for a class. You have chosen Bishop Gurdon for some of the reasons I have just mentioned. 
you have demonstrated a certain level of trust in BG when it comes to the education of your students. Our program is tested. Our program has a track record of success. As you choose classes for your students, I ask you to consider these facts. Our teachers and counselors will guide your students through their four years at BG based upon an understanding of this program and sensitivity as to how the rigors of BG affect the whole person formation and quality of experience for students. Beginning tonight and over the course of the next four years, please remember that you have committed yourselves to BG's long history of college preparation. You have committed yourselves to success within the framework of our carefully crafted curriculum delivered by dedicated educators. We appreciate the level of trust you have placed in us to guide your students to be the best possible versions of themselves. We will make every effort possible to reward that trust. Welcome to BG. We look forward to learning with you. Thank you, Mr. Garrell. Like I said, we have a very busy agenda tonight. We're going to go over graduation requirements, the daily schedule, four-year plan, course selection, placement exams, timeline, summer enrichment, technology, and closing comments by Mr. Spinsky, our principal. After that, we'll have some announcements, but I also want you to know that we have an, an ongoing chat opportunity. So if you have any questions, feel free to let us know and right here on the chat, and we will answer them as soon as possible. I'd like to make formal introductions so you know who everyone is. On our administrative team, we have Mrs. Broder, who is our president, Mrs. Linda Broder, Mr. Jason Strinisty, our principal, Mr. Dan Garrell, our vice principal, Mr. Ron Cody, our dean of formation. Our counseling staff is Ms. Mrs. Lisa Futrell, Mr. Ron Noel, and Mr. Dylan Mullen. Our administrative assistant in our counseling office is Mrs. Deb Bedard, who you will get to know these people very well over the next four years. Our other important people to know are our department chairs. And I'd like to share with you who those people are right now. In computer science, it's Mr. Tom and Delicato. In English, it's Mrs. Bethany Prunier. In fine arts, Mr. Ron Cody. Health and fitness, Ms. Nicole Adamson. Math is Mr. Peter Champagne and Mrs. Jane Wogelzinski. In, in science, Mr. Bruce Miller. Social studies, Mr. Mark Phillips. Theology, Mrs. Beth Raymond, and world language, Mr. Dan Joffrey. All of these people who I've just mentioned, email is on our website. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to email them um, at any time, and they'll be more than willing to help you um, throughout this process, uh, especially through course placement, because it can get a, it can get a little tricky. There's some forms in your packet that are really important for you to know um, what they are and how we're going to use those tonight. The first thing is the yellow sheet, um, which says course selection on it. It's a list of the courses. Some of them have already been picked for you, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but others, um, you'll have a little bit of choice, so we'll, we'll explain that in just one minute. We have also sent you this form electronically. So if you would prefer to use it electronically, that's fine. Whichever is most comfortable for you. If you'd like to fill out the yellow form and send it to us, we have, we're perfectly fine with that or the electronic form. Either way, we will take care of the course selections. Do not feel you have to do both. We're, we will take care of that. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the graduation requirements. As you can see, on the next slide, the graduation requirements are pretty robust. And the reason for that is it's we really prepare the students for college and for the next step. So the idea here is to make sure students have enough Carnegie units in each area so that they can major in whatever they would like in college. So in theological studies, students have to take four credits, which is one credit a year. English, the same thing, four credits, one credit a year. In math, the students can take three credits or more. Most students take more than four credits, um, let alone three. So um, the required courses are Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. However, most students at BG are graduating with Calculus or AP Calculus. 
Science is three credits because the science department has an elective year, the junior year, where students can take a science of their choice. The three required sciences are biology, chemistry, and physics to graduate. Social studies, it's 3.5 credits. So students take citizenship and government their freshman year, world history, sophomore year, US history, a half year of economics, and then an elective of their choice. In health and fitness, it's 1.5 credits, and that is a two PE courses and a health course. And in, and in world language, it's two credits of the student's choice. In computer science is 1.0 credits, which is essentials in computing being one of them. In fine arts, students can take their credits either in music and chorus, or they can take it in studio arts. The total number of credits is 28 to graduate. Students are to take seven credits a year. Um, this adds up to, to 24 credits, but if you include the elective credit, it comes to 27. So it's seven credits each year. The next slide you're seeing is the BG schedule. We have an eight day rotating schedule. So the students meet six classes a day, but they rotate through an eight day rotation. So this, if you look at the top line, that's the day. So if we talk about, oh, it's a day two or a day three, that's what the top box will say. So let's do a day one, for instance. Day one starts with period one, two, three, you drop four, you go to period five, six, seven, and drop eight. So period four and eight are dropped on a day one. And if you look at day two, it's two, three, four, drop five, six, seven, eight, drop one. So it goes right along as chronologically, if you look along the top row, and that is the eight day rotation. The next slide is the four year plan. If you look at the four year plan, you'll see that um, it's got all the dis disciplines listed. And then if you look down the ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade options. But if you look across, it also tells you how many credits. So if you look at a typical ninth grade, the students are taking exploration and science, intro to lit, art, PE, and so on. But if you look across, they still have requirements to meet by the time they graduate. So this is a very typical four-year plan for our students. And again, there are differences within it depending on leveling, depending on interest, and depending on how they what they might want to pursue as they they move ahead. This is a typical ninth grade schedule. This um, schedule that the slide that's up there, students in the ninth grade take the Bible, English, math, science, world language, citizenship and government, PE, an art elective, and a computer elective. And as you look on your yellow sheet, you can see all those things are listed. Bible, citizenship and government, and the essentials in computer are the typical, and PE are the typical classes that every freshman will take. Um, you cannot major in a discipline in your freshman year or in high school. So the classes that would have some leveling to them and some option to them would be English. This is the level of English is determined by our department chairs in English and in biology. So in English, if you are interested in taking an honors level, the department chair will go over that based on your grades from eighth grade, your results of your HSPT entrance exam, and your recommendations from your teachers at your middle school. The same is true for biology. And the teachers go over these to make sure that in an honors level, which is heavy narrative and pretty deep and fast in how it progresses, they want to make sure that you're prepared for that and prepared for success. As far as math and world language goes, that's where the placement exam comes in. There are very specific skills that students need to have in order to be successful at the next level, which would be honors or the level two. So our faculty members 
have prepared placement exams in both those areas. And if you look at the placement exam sheet, you'll see that there are a number of offerings. And I'll get to that in a minute. So right now, what you want to do is look at the typical ninth grade schedule, look at your yellow sheet or the online sheet, and you're going to check off the classes that you think you want to take. So now, some of them are already done for you, as I mentioned, um, your theology class, your social studies class, your computer class, your PE class. So the front side, you will pick what language you would like to take whether or not you would like it be considered for honors in English and, and biology. And on the back, you will pick your fine arts elective. You can either go um, the studio art route or you can be, go the music chorus route. If you are interested in studio art, there are two studio art courses to start with, either studio art or foundations in art. If you're a student who's very interested in moving ahead in art, taking advantage of some of our wonderful art courses and upper level courses, such as ultimately you want to get to AP art, then you would take studio art. If you are a student that just wants to sort of dabble in art, get the, rec get the requirement over with, then you would take foundations in art. If you are a student who's a musician and would like to take band, Keep in mind that's a full year course. So you are scheduling seven courses, but in band you would have eight. Unless you don't want to take um, computers, you have to take PE. So there would be a half a year that you would not have an academic period, which fills in that eighth period for the eight day rotation. If you have any questions, put them here on the chat so we can answer them for you because that can be a little bit, of, a little bit confusing. So as a, as a music student, if you are in band, you will have a full year of band. And that will obviously meet your fine arts requirement. However, you will not have an academic period for the full year. So just be aware of that. And if you have any questions about that, please let us know. So tonight, you want to make sure you fill out all the, all the slots on the yellow sheet or the online sheet. And as I said, the courses are very prescribed in many areas. And just keep in mind that if you have an end goal of getting to a certain course, let us know. We can walk you through that. But you cannot major in any discipline in high school. The idea, again, is to make sure that your foundation is very strong so you can major in anything that you would like in college. So keep that in mind. But again, any questions, please, please, please let us know. So there are certain um, options in biology. Biology is the standard course, as you can see on the four-year plan, that almost all our freshmen take. If you are interested in biology honors or earth science or chemistry honors, those are through our department chair's placement. So if you are interested in that and you would like to let Mr. Miller know that, you can email him, but he will do that based on your application, your grades in middle school, your HSPT entrance exam, and your recommendation from your math teacher uh, in your application. Mrs. Prudier will do the same for Intro to Lit Honors or Intro to Lit, and she will also look at your grades from your middle school, your HSPT entrance exam, and your recommendations from your teachers. So placement exam. Placement exam form is that kind of marigold yellow orange form. Uh, we will also send it out electronically. You can get in touch if you're interested in taking the exam and registering for them. You can get in touch with Mr. Giarusso at giarussod at bghs.org. He is um, registering all the students. Just so that you know, again, it's in world language and in math. The math exam, as you can see on this slide, is 60 minutes. If you're interested in Algebra 1 honors, you're going to take the Algebra exam. If you're interested in Geometry honors, you'll take the Algebra 1 Mastery exam. If you're taking Algebra 2 honors, there are two exams and they're an hour each. So students must take both exams to show mastery in Algebra 1 and geometry. 
So if you are taking the geometry mastery exam, make sure you bring your scientific um, calculate, um, graphing calculator, your compass, and a ruler. You'll need those for the exam. Placement exams are also for world languages. And the world language exams are um, also 60 minutes. Although math exams are both for April, offered April 4th and April 18th, world language exams are only offered on April 18th. Please see the placement exam schedule to ensure that you register for the right exams on the right day. The next slide is just to mark your calendars. We're hopeful that things will start to get moving again, but if not, we will plan all virtual events, but we will not um, let them go. We will definitely have the events. They would just be in a different format. So April 4th and 18th, we are doing the placement exams. They obviously are going to be virtual. We will do them through a Zoom classroom. And so students will be invited to the, to the exam with a link and we will get that to you the day before the exam. On June 5th, we will be sending you a very big packet of information. This information includes the preliminary schedule, summer reading, information about uniforms, information about the start of school, everything you're going to need to know in order to start the school year. And we are very hopeful that the school year will start on time. On June 17th is our formation night, our student formation night, and we are hopeful that we'll be able to have this, but we're not sure that we're going to be able to have a gathering. So we will, again, do this virtually. August 3rd, our summer enrichment program begins, and this it, our classes in, this is for students who are interested in classes in study skills, English, math, and we will also have our freshman orientation day, which will be August 24th, first day of school. It's going to count as a day of school. And we will have our parent formation day as well, but that is to be announced. We're not 100% sure when we're going to be having that. So, but we will definitely let you know. We will communicate with you all summer long. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Strinisty to come forward and share with you, bring your own device program that we have at Bishop Girton and to share some closing remarks. Mr. Strinisty. Good evening. While I certainly wish we were together in person, I hope that tonight's program has been informative from afar. You are in great hands with our counselors and academic department chairs. Course selection can be stressful, but I assure you that you can place your trust in them as you navigate this transition. I'm gonna talk a bit about our technology and device program. We are a one-to-one -one school where every student is expected to bring a personal learning device with them each day. Our model is BYOD or bring your own device, which means that we encourage students to bring the combination of devices that works best for them. On any given day, our network has a mix of Windows and Mac laptops, Chromebooks, Apple and Android phones, tablets, smartwatches, and a variety of other devices, including my internet-connected coffee machine. Not all of these are recommended as primary learning devices, obviously. We ask that students bring a primary device that has a keyboard and can support common applications such as Microsoft Office or web-based email. This means that the best device is oftentimes a laptop, a PC or Mac. Surface tablets work great. The Chromebooks have some limitations in the software that they can run, but they're good cost-effective options as well. Please be assured, and I'm sorry to all of the gamers out there because I'm not about to help your case. Please be assured that you don't need to run out and buy a $2,000 laptop. Most of what students need to do at school will run on a relatively modest system. It's your choice whether you want to upgrade beyond that point. However, if a student is interested in something like graphics design or engineering, CAD, video editing, and the like, it may make sense to buy more capability now in anticipation of future needs. If you have any questions, I encourage you to speak with Mr. Aaron Fitzgibbons, our director of IT, who's led us in our transition to BYOD over the past seven years. He's built a tremendous seamless experience for our students and I know that you'll come to appreciate that during your time at Bishop Girton. 
Over the summer, you'll also find out information about purchasing options that we have to get some discounts on certain technology options. I have a couple things that I'd like to discuss to close us off tonight. First, I want to discuss Bishop Girton's commitments to our families during this time, which we all know to be a stressful and uncertain one. Institutions everywhere are having to demonstrate whether they can be trusted or relied upon to serve their communities during tough times. We here at BG intend to meet our commitments. When a student enrolls at Bishop Garden, we make a commitment to provide an outstanding education, a supportive community, and a whole person formation in the tradition of the Brothers of the Sacred Heart. A key part of the Brothers' mission is the concept of offering sanctuary. That's the word they use. Safety, consistency, compassion, shelter from the harshness of the outside world. As chaos and fear take root around us and the storm arrives, the concept of sanctuary seems to play an even bigger role right now than any of us anticipated. At Bishop Gerd, we will continue our classes, maintain our relationships, and uphold the spirit of our Catholic community. What has this meant? On a Sunday, March 15th, the governor closed all schools in New Hampshire with basically one hour of warning. Our community stepped up. The next day, on Monday morning, every student and every teacher at Bishop Garden was ready, fully online, live, in person, together as a community, carrying on with their classes, being present to each other, and continuing our mission. Our faculty and our students figured it out. There were no complaints, no attendance problems, nobody took advantage, nobody went looking for problems, obstacles were overcome quickly. It was all in and we as a community demonstrated grit and resilience. To put this in perspective, I believe that the coronavirus poses the biggest educational disruption that Bishop Girton has faced in its 56 year history. And this could be the biggest disruption to our society since the Great Depression and World War II. Our community did not miss a beat. Not only are we continuing our classes, but we're actively seeking ways to build faith and community into our routine. In other words, we're not just getting by, we're looking to fulfill our whole mission during this time. And speaking of commitments, our school's commitment to you has already started. All of the students attending tonight's program are now part of the NEST. Bishop Girton is here for you, just as it is for our current students. Please feel free to participate in any of the activities described in our NEST or service pages. If you're worried about your academic progress and you'd like to audit BG classes and certain subjects during the remainder of the year, please reach out to us. Our juniors and seniors have offered to help with any tutoring needs that you have. We also want to make sure that no family is turned away from BG due to the impacts of the coronavirus. So please be sure to communicate with us about any difficulties that you're having. And if you need help with any necessities or you just want our community praying for you, our community is here for you. Just reach out. We are a phone call or an email away. At Bishop Gurdon, we will provide stability, predictability, normalcy, and community. Real sanctuary at a time of uncertainty. We don't know when we will be back in the building, but we don't really need to know because we know that no matter what, our mission will continue. That's our commitment to our families. And finally, to close us off tonight, I'd like to speak to the students. In my role as principal, I have the special honor of giving you your first BG homework assignment on this program's night and your last one at graduation. The assignment at graduation is not a secret. I'll even tell you what it is now. That assignment is to change the world. In other words, use your talents and your abilities to make the world a better place because you lived in it. Tonight's assignment, your first of many BG homework assignments is just as important. You are now a Cardinal. Your assignment tonight is to fully assume that role, being a Cardinal starting tonight. Now I give this assignment every year and usually what it means is obvious. Finish eighth grade strongly. Thank your teachers. Be a good representative of BG out in public. Show pride in your new school. Wear school colors around town and come to BG events. But this year is very different. It's not obvious at all what it means to be a Cardinal when you can't even leave the house. So what does it mean to be a Cardinal under these circumstances? I can think of two things. First, let your ratio of gratitude to regret 
be 5 to 1. Second, focus on controlling what you can control and don't dwell on what you can't. First, let me talk about gratitude and regret. Just like you, BG students are missing out on a lot of things that they love to do. They miss their friends and teachers. Our athletes are watching their spring sports season tick away, and for some, it was their last season playing the sport they love. Our girls basketball players were favored to win a championship, and their season got cut short before they did. Our actors and musicians didn't get to put on a musical that they'd practiced all year. Our robotics team built a robot for six weeks and never got to fully compete with it. You're missing things too that are important to you and you know what these things are. It's okay and it's healthy to grieve a bit when you lose something important. It's not useful, however, to dwell on regrets to the point where they paralyze you. Gratitude is the answer. We still have a lot to be grateful for. We have our health and we have the things we know we can do to protect it and to protect the health of those we love. There's more beyond that. We have time to learn new things. We're part of new ways of doing things educationally that will last for years to come. We're less entitled. We're learning not to take things for granted. Safety, normalcy, the ability to go out, the ability to travel, the ability to buy toilet paper, other people around us day to day. The little things that used to annoy us now seem pretty small by comparison, don't they? We're getting closer as families. We're spending time with people closest to us. I've seen more families walking around my neighborhood than I ever have before. If that thing we've lost, that graduation, that school dance, that athletic team, that activity, if the thing we've lost is all that's on our mind, maybe we need to think about our priorities. Figure out what really matters and be grateful. Whenever you find yourself down about something you're missing, think of five things that you're grateful of. Let your ratio of gratitude to regret be five to one. Find five things to be grateful for, for every single regret. And when the storm passes, keep being grateful. That's what it means to be a cardinal. So once your ratio of gratitude to regret is working out at five, my second challenge is to take full control of what you can control and let go of what you can. You've all seen the serenity prayer, probably one of the most memed prayers of all time, which says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You need to develop that wisdom right now and decide what you can control. You can certainly control how you interact with your family. I can assure you that your parents and family members are just as concerned as you are, giving up just as much as you are just as sad and fearful and stressed as you are, even if they show it in different ways. Is your attitude about the situation making things better or worse for them? Are your actions making the situation easier or harder? Are you offering to do things around the house or out in the yard? Are you helping to take care of younger siblings if you have them? What are you contributing to your family right now? As a Cardinal, that is something that's in your control. How about school? Every school is in a different place in responding to the coronavirus. Some schools and students are assuming tremendous responsibility for learning. Some students out there aren't being pushed very much at all right now. So how is your attitude? Are you fully investing yourself as a learner or are you playing the game and doing the minimum? Is coronavirus an opportunity to get motivated or is it an excuse to be lazy? Are you looking out for peers who are struggling and making sure they get assistance? Or are you just ignoring them and pretending they don't exist once you sign out for the day? Are you thanking your teachers as they reinvent themselves so you can learn? Or are you taking them for granted? You can contribute in many ways to your school right now. How are you contributing to your school? And you can control yourself too. You can't really control coronavirus, but you can decide if it will control you. You can decide what your mental state of mind is at any point what thoughts you let take root. You can decide if you're gonna waste all of your time watching thousands of TikTok videos or playing hundreds of hours of Call of Duty, or if you use this as an opportunity to learn a new skill, connect with your family, or even find a way to give back. Right now, BG students recognize that they have control. They're passing out food, they're making masks, they're 3D printing protective equipment for medical personnel. 
there are ways that you can do this. There are ways to help right now. So are you a better person after the coronavirus than you were before? That's in your control. You get to decide that. So that's my homework assignment. Two parts. First, find five things to be grateful for whenever you start to experience a sense of regret. And second, control what you can and let the rest go in faith that it will be okay. I believe that this situation is going to reshape our society in a good way long term and that you are coming of age at a key moment in history. Perhaps you are the leaders of the next greatest generation. In fact, I think you're already completing my homework assignment of changing the world. What you're doing right now, staying home, making sacrifices, is literally saving lives. That certainly changes the world for those people that you might never know and might never meet. So have faith that you have the ability to manage whatever comes your way, because you will. There may be tough times ahead, but the storm will pass. And when we're all together next year, you will bring that stronger, smarter, more resilient self into our school community. And we will be an even stronger community because of your shared experiences. We are proud to call you Cardinals and looking forward to what you will bring to our school. Please be a Cardinal starting tonight. Welcome to Bishop Garden High School. We are excited to have you joining us. Okay, thank you, Mr. Strinacy. The last thing I'd like to share with you is that we are launching a new website. We're very excited about it. It's coming out in a couple weeks, so please stay tuned for that. And on the website, you'll find all the information you will need for counseling, academics, um, personnel, handbook forms, course information, athletics, student life, upcoming events. It will be a very um, dynamic website. And we're very, very excited about it. And we'd love your feedback on how, how you think it looks and how it's working. Um, so tonight, the main thing is to collect your forms. And like I said, you can mail them in to us or you can email them to us. You, the information is on this slide. You can email them to me, posnanskyb at bghs.org, or you can email them to me, um, to BG, to my attention. And we will um, start working on these forms as soon as we get them. Like I said, the formation night is going to be June 17th. We're hopeful that we'll see you in person, but if not, we will definitely see you virtually. And more information will be coming on that as soon as um, we know more. And we'd like to thank you very, very much for being a part of this tonight. And like I said, any questions you have, we are more than happy to answer for you. This can be confusing. We know that. And we're here to help you out. So please ask us any questions. And if you feel that there are questions that are for the, for the group, definitely put them onto this chat. If it's a more personal question and you would like to ask that personally to me, please feel free to email me at posnanskyb at bghs.org. I hope you and your family are staying healthy. We wish you all the best, and we're very excited to welcome our newest Cardinals to BG. Um, and we pray every day that you'll be with us very soon in person. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night.